In this video, I would like to take a quick look at a watch that I think is fantastic. It's really attractive in a number of ways. I've come back to it over the past year several times, but there are a few things that give me pause that keep it at arm's length for me. So let's unpack the Seamaster 300 in full bronze gold. Before I jump into the details, before I share my opinion, let me first shout out exquisite timepieces. They're a great family-owned brick-and-mortar authorized dealer that has lent in dozens of watches over the years. They've been a huge supporter of my channel. So uh, if you're shopping any Omega, any Seiko, Grand Seiko, Breguet, a number of awesome watches that they carry, I recommend them and I'll leave a link in the description of this video. Now, let's get to what makes this attractive and appealing, but at the same time, makes me apprehensive about buying it. This is the material, bronze gold. It's actually 37.5% gold, so it's highly anti-corrosive. It adds a nice level of weight to this, and that's one of the things that I really like. I love wearing my day date on a daily basis. I love the luster. I love the weight. I love, I just love wearing the precious metal. So this watch is surprisingly hefty and it has a great tone. It's hallmarked nine karat gold and it also has silver and palladium amongst other materials, other metals. They make up this unique formula that Omega says is patent pending. Now, that being said, I don't know how this will age over time. Omega says that this will slowly age and it will have a natural, beautiful look to it. But what does that mean? Is this going to look frosty fresh in three years? Because I think it's very attractive as is right now. Or is it going to look like patinaed brass or bronze? Will it look almost indistinguishable from a Tudor Black Bay bronze in five years or 10 years? I'm not exactly sure. And that's the biggest thing that gives me pause is, you know, not knowing how this will look in the long haul, because when you buy this piece, you need to think about the long haul because the retail price is $13,200, which if you think about it, considering the fact that it's nearly 40% gold, it's not outrageous in that aspect. So uh, that's kind of the big thing. I'm intrigued about the material. I like the look. I like the weight. I like the way that it is halfway in between moonshine yellow gold and Sedna red gold or rose gold in terms of overall tone. I like that weight. I like the finishing. I like the size. I like this angular design that pays appropriate homage to Omega's first professional dive watch that debuted back in 1957. I love the broad hour hand. I love the sandwich dial. I love the fact that the dial is simple. There is no superfluous text, no water resistance designation or chronometer certified designation or master chronometer designation or anything of the sort. I think sometimes watch brands, they get a little carried away in putting text on a dial just for the fact that it's traditional to do. And they think it visually balances out the watch like we need advertising on or, uh, or a description of what our watch is as we wear it around. And I'm looking at you, Tudor. The other thing that I really like about this is it has surprisingly good bezel action. So I know Omega has never really been known for having great bezel action when it comes to the mechanical feel, the back play, the loudness, uh, just, you know, the overall experience of using the bezel. But this one is fantastic. And I don't know if it's just <laughs> the combination of of uh, bronze gold on bronze gold, but it really feels nice and I think is a highlight. I also like the loom. This is a full loomed bezel. This has a ceramic bezel insert. So you have the gloss, you have the shine, you have the low light luminescence, and then you have the color play. You don't normally see brown or bronze on a luxury watch. So it's, it's just, I don't know, it's a combination of various elements that really captivates my imagination and keeps me coming back. And I really think that it could be a great one-two punch with uh, my current daily driver, which is the day date from Rolex. I think uh, it would really break up the, uh, the days of the week very nicely to wear when I want a sports piece. Now, that being said, apart from not knowing exactly how this will age, 
there are two things that I think hold this back as well. And the first one is almost unforgivable for me, and that is the lack of anti-reflective treatment on this box-shaped sapphire crystal. It's a gorgeous shape. It fits the case well, <laughs> but <sighs> I know this is not acrylic. I don't really care about paying appropriate homage to that specific aspect of the original Seamaster 300. So give me the excellent ARC that Omega already does on their Seamaster Professional and on their Planet Ocean and their Ultra Deep and, you know, the Aqua Terra. Those crystals are so satisfying. And I think with the dial of this uh, level of detail work with the actual bronze material, the sandwich construction, the PVD on the broad hour hand that's beveled, I think that would be very nice because the reflections are fairly distracting on this piece and it's it's hard for me to deal with. Now, the other thing that bothers me about this piece is the fact that the leather strap is just average. It's not that nice. Um, it's not that long either. So if you have larger wrists, you're going to be near the end of, uh, of the pinholes here within the strap. I do like the fact that there is a bronze gold buckle, but really it doesn't feel like a premium product. And when I'm spending north of $10,000, I want that watch to feel premium on every level, if that makes sense. So a couple things that are disappointing when it comes to the execution of this model, but the things that it does really well, who it does really, really well and keeps me coming back to it. Now, I will end with one final positive that I think is, uh, is another huge selling point, and that is the movement. This is a master chronometer, a meta-certified movement. It has the tri-level coaxial escapement technology. This has very sharp arabesque finishing and all of the tech goodies that us watch collectors like to see, like a silicon hairspring, a free-sprung balance, twin barrels for storing, you know, the, the 60 hours of power reserve and my favorite feature, the jumping time zone hour hand. So you can independently adjust this hour hand forward or backward without hacking the balance and interrupting the timekeeping. So it's perfect if you travel, it's perfect if you live in an area of the globe that observes daylight savings time. So I just find it the most practical or my favorite of the more common complications. Now that all being said, again, I'm intrigued by this piece. I love the color, I love the design, I love the details, I love the movement. I'm intrigued by the material, but I have a few reservations and I'd love to hear what your opinion is. Do you own a bronze gold watch, either uh, the Chronoscope or the Seamaster 300? And how is it aging in your experience? Please place that in the comment section. If you want to send me an email with a few pictures, I would be uh, very, very happy to receive that. I'll leave my email in the description. So I'm interested to hear your take. And again, if you are shopping any Omega, any Seiko, Grand Seiko, if you're shopping uh, Glass Huta Original or Breguet or Blancpain, I'm going to recommend exquisite timepieces and a link will be in the description. If you've made it this far, thank you. I appreciate that. Leave me a like if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe for more varied watch content. Thanks. <sighs> you guys hear my daughters? I love being a dad, but sometimes it's very hard to get a quiet moment to film.